Yes, yes, here we are. Bridge City Radio, 100.7 FM, KCLA. I'm your host, Victor Bustillos. And I'm Frank Contreras. Want to welcome everybody back. That's right, that's right. And uh, today in this studio, we got a very special guest. Someone who's been a big mentor to me in my uh, reggae endeavors as a collector. Taught me a lot about the music, the history, the culture. Super K of Arrow Sound. Greetings of one love, Bridge City Radio and beyond. Yes, yes, Super. So uh, what we're going to do is let Super K uh, take us on a journey, a little foundation reggae journey early on in the years. And uh, we'll come back to you in a minute. So enjoy.
get right on the beat now. Ooh, yeah. Everybody gotta keep on the moving right now, sir. They gotta keep on coming in. Everybody gotta keep on the moving. Whoa, yes, I say now. That's nice right there, Super. Keep on a coming in to this dance. To this dance. Gonna put on the pressure. Sounds and pressure. Gonna put on the pressure. Sounds are pressure. Who can take it now? Leave it. Who can take it? Stay under it. Oh, yes, Lord. When I put on the pressure, you're going to keep on a coming in. Dig me straight.
super well some nice stuff you played there man took me back a lot of tunes that i that i really really love that are near and dear to my heart you played a couple real ogs there man i really enjoyed and there was a couple that i that i've never heard before man 
So why don't you get in, uh, let us know uh, a little bit of what you were running through right now. Well, thank you, thank you. And um, greetings to all the listeners out there, out there on uh, Bridge Radio. Um, well, so most of what I played already did this in this um, this last set was a lot of Studio One going from some of the older ska stuff. And for those of you who know the history of reggae music, you know, Studio One, the infamous immortal Studio One out of Jamaica, the Motown of reggae music. Um, headed up by Sir, the late great Sir Cox and Dodd, rest in peace. And um, a lot of songs there were um, put out by that studio. And um, if you're not really up on Studio One, um, it's definitely a good starting point for those of you who are um, interested in learning more about reggae music and the yes, origins of yes. it. You know, it's a real good place. But um, but that last song was by the Heptones. Um, it was Sweet Talking, um, I would say probably uh, probably early 70s, late 60s tune right right there. Before that, it was on Jackpot label, um, a, a real nice song, uh, Slim Smith, Rocksteady tune, my conversation with that big, big bass, you yeah, know what I mean? Real yeah, heavy tune, you know, man. Yeah, big, big. Um, you heard that, I've heard that reworked um, even with the, the dance hall version of it, digitized version of it, like you like you hear most of the Studio One catalog rework these days. I mean, that's how, how important those backing rhythms were to this music as a genre you know what i mean they're, they're still here with us even like 40 50 years later you know so, oh yeah man yeah. Well, what would you say is one of the more the the bigger tunes it's been just backed so many times i mean it's got to, i know there's some that are like in the hundreds uh, that they've just used that backing tune over and over and over and over you know the funny thing about it is that um in jamaican music is that a lot of rhythms that had started with um, some of the foundation studios they've um the names have changed over time from what the original name of the rhythm was from when it first started. And so now you get an original studio one and the listener and the fan who knows what that rhythm is and where it started. It's not even called that anymore. It has yeah. a totally, totally it's different evolved. name, but it's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same exact rhythm, but it has a different name, you know, cause um, the, the general kind of way it goes is usually rhythms are named after the song that they're first recorded. That, off, that were right? first recorded off of exactly. So, you know, that's kind of how it goes. And, um, you know, just the way Jamaican ingenuity is when it comes to, to, to music, you know, you hear a lot of it recycled, used again and again. I mean, because some things, I mean, let's just face it, you just can't improve on, you know, and Jamaicans yeah. use, use the rhythms again and again, even with different labels and different artists. And they go by, they're called versions. You know, they have many, many different versions over the same backing track. You know, I, I don't think in American music, a lot of artists or labels will go for that. But, you know, it's an accepted practice for many, many decades in Jamaican music to do that. Yeah, we heard quite a few of them today, starting off with at the top of my set with the the real rock rhythm. I mean, man, I can't even, instrumental, I can't even name how many songs. I can't even remember yeah. how many songs over the years and over the decades have been made on, you know, with artists. Um, and and Coxon is, is responsible for a lot of those, correct? Oh, I mean, yeah, that's that's where it started. Everybody I mean, so, really wanted those those Studio One rhythms, man. I mean, um, when, when dance hall or reggae music started transforming and going digital, um, in the early 70s or so, and digital equipment started making it into the islands, you know, that's like the first um, real catalog of music that those producers started pulling from, you know, wow. because that was their childhood memories, you know, uh, and that was the music that a lot of people were familiar with for so many decades in Jamaica before the the whole um, industry started going, going from analog over to digital. And so that th those are the first back in rhythms they started pulling from wow. to recreate even on different labels other than studio one, you know, cause at that point in time, I mean, copyrights was like, that was an unheard of thing in Jamaica music. You know, they didn't have that, <laughs> not like in America, man. Not that's one thing I love about super K. Uh, so this guy, man, I've known him for, for many years now and he's been a real good friend of mine and uh, you know, his knowledge has always been really extensive. So, you know, what I want to do is I want to have you back out for uh, oh, an interview definitely. session most and definitely. we'll do, we'll yeah, do a record talk with you and get real deep into this man um but you know what for now we got about we got about 20 minutes left of the show 25 minutes i want why don't you go ahead and close us out with some beauty and um you know let's uh let's enjoy the rest of the show all right let's get right back to it then here, all right here we go. bridge here we city go. radio 100.7 fm kcla <laughs> Sometimes when I think I'm alone 
times when I think I'm alone You're behind me and you're not home You shouldn't have waited around for me Big up my brethren, Judah Skenda Tafari, one love, I am.
big up man like Shinehead. There's no man who wants to be alone. There's no child without a dream. And there's no song without a meaning. That's how I know. No me without you. There's no me without you. There's no life without a plan. And every woman wants herself a good man. There's no heartaches without the tears. And time just can't roll on without the years. That's how I know. Now clap your hands and stamp your feet. This happens to be a trade wild treat.
Super. I knew I could depend on you, man, to come through with some fire, man. I'm a big foundation nerd. Uh, when I first got into reggae, um, you know, when I first l- learned about reggae, of course, I knew Bob Marley, Peter Tosh. Uh, Burning Spear was about as deep as it got for me and Ika Mouse. You know what I mean? I was like, they were they were deep for me. Uh, but man, once I started learning about this foundation stuff, it's like, oh, wow, you know, early 70s stuff, you know, mid 70s stuff. Like I just started falling in love. So, oh, man, I, I love that session. Absolutely loved everything you played right now. Oh, man. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Any nope. any any particular ones that you uh, that was, you loved out of those? I was man? just thinking to myself when I was running through those tunes one at a time that um. Man, this could have been a Studio One show all by itself, man. <laughs> yeah. I was playing Studio One subs. I'm like, man, I I think I'm a Studio One fan for life, I think. Yeah, I, I seen that. Two, I mean, you two. went from, from the Peckings label, I saw that, and, and then I seen that All-Star label, which surprised me. You know, that's like a sub label, right, out of Studio One, the All-Star label? Oh, exactly. Or? You know, I didn't even I didn't realize how old that record was until I started looking at it. I'm like, man, geez, this is an OG press right here, yeah. man. I, if that, if that, um, that 45 could only speak speak stories you know i wonder, How many where, I wonder where it's been, been exactly yeah you know, exactly be, between 1962 or three or so and now you know i mean man it's probably been to england and back probably, <laughs> and all through the caribbean probably by now you know but yeah, yeah i absolutely loved it man i'm sure our listeners dug at least one song out of that set man it's a beautiful thing and all seven inch 45s here on bridge bridge city radio um you know we we try to keep true to the vinyl uh, obviously, that won't be the instance for every show, uh, depending on who we have in as our guest. But we do not discriminate whether you're on Serato or vinyl or, um, you know, whatever it is, CDJs. Uh, we, we love the music and that's what it's all about, man. But but yeah, uh, a lot of those were super crunchy. And um, that's just how it is, you know, you know. Some of those forty fives, man. It's vinyl, love it or leave it. You know, that, that just comes with the territory. You know, Absol- yeah, absolutely. Yeah, snap, crackle, and pop. Absolutely. You know, I, I heard you mention the the Peckins label. You know, big up Peckins, and uh, I, for those of you who don't know the, the the brief history of Peckins label, out of London. Um, I, I well, they were Studio One's European distributor for many, many years, decades. I mean, um prior to the passing of Sir Cox and Dodd, rest in peace. And um, they, they've continued to, to the son of um, 
Peckings, the original owner, has continued to carry the torch for the Peckings label and the store because it originally started out as a store and distrib distribution for Studio One. And I think Treasure Isle also. I think they, they were exclusive wow. carriers of Treasure Isle also. And the the whole history behind that store itself there in London, I mean, man, it just care, has its own history as far as its influence through the 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 mod culture the skinhead culture later on that influenced just a whole mm. gen, a whole generations and other genres of music too with two, the two-tone label and all that movement that went on later in the 80s you know i mean that was the start but um wow yeah, so yeah that that check out peckings um if you get a chance they're doing a lot of big things now with a lot of new and upcoming artists out of england so yeah that's definitely worth checking out Good, good, man. Well, we, we only got a couple minutes left of the show, Mike. So why don't you go ahead and uh, let everybody know how we can get in contact with you. You got oh, a, sure. a social media sure. where they can follow you. and uh... um, I'm only I'm only on Instagram these days. I kind of gave up on Facebook and everything going on over there. But, right. um, so um, you can catch me at Arrow Super K. That's S-U-P-A-K-A-Y, Arrow Super K, all one word, no no um, spaces or anything in between. Um, I'm pretty good at getting back. Um, and just let me know. Uh, give 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 me a shout out there, and just let me know that you you heard me or check me out on the on the show here, and you know I'll be sure to add you. Great, great man. Well, I I appreciate you coming out, Mike. It's been a blessing having you. Oh, I, I appreciate you you having me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and letting me share some of this great reggae music nah, over man. the decades. Like I said, man, it's my honor. So we're definitely gonna call you back out for an interview session one day. I look forward to and, it. And uh, you know, for now, uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to Bridge City Radio. This is one hundred point seven FM KCLA. You are listening to Super K from Arrow Sound. And uh, hope you guys have a blessed day. Blessed. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in.